welcome to season three of Entrepreneurs in Fuego. We're documenting the journey of incredible entrepreneurs. The main man, Darren Chapman. And you've got an amazing organization called Tiger Mountain Foundation. Explain to us what Tiger Mountain does, my man. Well, Tiger Mountain Foundation does a unique brand of community work. We feel that we do a fantastic job of combining um, some of the disparity in the low-income neighborhood yep. with uh, business that's going on on a big level uh, outside of that low-income neighborhood. And, and so Tiger Mountain Foundation, like I said, brings this low-income community, engages and connects it to uh, enfranchisement. Why has it been so hard to do that? And continues to be hard. Why is this, why is this such a big challenge? Yeah. Where, where is the resistance coming from? Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I, it, so it, it's a multitude of reasons. I'm going to give you, I think, my top two All right. uh, reasons why it's been so tough. I, I think, first off, people who typically aren't into big business um, for, for a lot of different reasons, wh whether it's uh, educational, whether it's uh, uh, social, whether it's uh, behavioral, mm -hmm. environmental, um, typically those are uh, very glaring reasons to not be engaged with bigger, better, stronger business. So um, that, that's a divide, it's a huge divide. And, and I think uh, when I initially founded Tiger Mountain Foundation, that, that was one of the most, probably the biggest reason that I saw that the neighborhoods that I grew up in didn't really develop like they should. Uh, as far as having community development right there in the heart of the neighborhood, we're talking about the number one consumers, low-income families, low-income low communities. Yep. So why wouldn't that development actually show its face in some other really cool proactive ways to socially engage the people, uh, community develop the people so that the people literally are stepping in despite their level of asset they're stepping into jobs in their own community. So that, that was a huge reason. And I think the other reason is once guys like myself who uh, aspire uh, and then maybe uh, even achieve, I don't want to give myself uh, too much credit, <laughs> even though I'm on no, Entrepreneurs in Fuego. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm feeling on fire here, so I don't, I don't want to say pop my collar too much over here. but. I appreciate the opportunity though, Francisco, because the other reason is guys like myself really have to get better at when we get an opportunity, whether we're pro athletes or yep. whether we're businessmen who really get a concept and know how to bring that concept to life, somehow we have to be the ones that actually infuse it back to where we came from. We're, we're watching. 85%, if not 90% of our people who are sitting in the same classrooms with us not achieve, or, or not even, they become apathetic to achievement. And, and that's quite naturally could lead into a billion dollar prison pipeline and, and or other reasons why that can exist uh, so rapidly across the nation, and, and including South Phoenix. How do we break the cycle? Mm. How do we break that cycle? Because yeah. indeed, we're talking about a group of consumers, like you said at the mm -hmm. beginning, that actually want to pay more uh, for the same products that you would buy, say, on a fries in Scottsdale, vis-a-vis right. -vis a fry. <laughs> there's not even fries in South Phoenix, but mm. any you know, El Rancho market or something down in South Phoenix. Sure, we're paying a lot more down there, and so it's true that the poor pays more. Right. How do we break that cycle? Is it hmm. both? Do we need to change attitudes in both communities? Say in the say in this case, the South Phoenix community, as sure. well as the corporate community. Hey, it's okay for you to move your big facility down here in this community. Hmm. And from the community perspective, is like <coughs> we're moving in here, we're moving businesses over here. Mm -hmm. Let's make it our own. How do we marry those two concepts? Gee, so so that's the. It's not an easy. That, thing to that's do, a, but that's that's actually the trillion dollar question. Right. I, I mean, I, I think because we haven't figured out ways to once again proactively create that development um, and, and bring even the stimulus full circle 
Right, so, so that now even a person who has a third grade education, is 50 years old, maybe did 30 years of incarceration on a mistake they made when they were 18 years old, now they're back into society. They have one or two choices. That, that's either to repeat, become a recidivist, right. right? And or get engaged with something very innovative, very creative. Ah, here's an opportunity to maybe do a shameless pr plug for, for the type of work that we do. Or, or just keep it real though, Francisco. I mean, I think the way that we break that, that cycle is, is to have this type of innovation that actually can engage the folks of our community into caring about what happens next door to them, what, what happens in that vacant field as they turn it into a very vibrant community garden, what, what other opportunities now in that community garden that actually speak to the different disparity, health disparity with nutritious produce, active lifestyle as opposed to obesity. These are some of the ways now that you can actually engage the folks and, and start to break that cycle because now people, as opposed to looking at this type of creativity as a food stamp program, yep. as more cheese to get for free right. that clogs your arteries, right. or Jimmy Carter style. <laughs> you see? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what we're looking for now, um, this type of creativity that actually brings to the forefront people who now want to care more about what's happening next door to them. They, they see it as an opportunity to maybe shed a few pounds in that active lifestyle space in that community garden. It's a Trojan horse and, and it's it's one, oper one way that we can actually bridge and break that cycle. Diabetes uh, in the African American community as well as the Latin community, mm. I believe it's two or three times higher than in the uh, uh, Anglo uh, community. Man. Uh, that, that, that ain't no coincidence. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. If we are able to, again, just education, right, break the cycle, sure. organizations such as yours mm -hmm. who are building gardens, community, right in the middle of what and seemingly would be impossible to do or impossible communities. No. The moment, I always say this, look, yeah. mm -hmm. and, and maybe I'm, I'm whistling Dixie as they mm -hmm. say, but mm -hmm. if we are able to give ownership. As they say in Dixie. That's what it's <laughs> Hey, you know, I'll be the, the brother and the brown man got to keep it real, man. I, I say that too, and I'm like, where in the heck did I get that from? Oh, I, 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 I whistled Dixie, whistle Dixie, you know, Dixie, baby. I'm not really That's sure right. what I'm necessarily whistling, but. But, but yeah, exactly. I'm sorry. I, but yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Hopefully, I'm not whistling. <laughs> yeah, right, right. But, but I tell you know, creating a community in which the community itself takes ownership to it. Sure. Give it ownership. Mm -hmm. Because I guarantee you that that 17 year old kid mm. that has been in prison a couple of times and it's coming out, it's been in juvie and it's coming out. Wow. If the moment you say, hey, look, by the way, you own part of this garden. Really? Yeah, you own part. They're going to take care of it. Instead of saying, eh, you know, yeah. we're going to look for a job yeah. or, you know, you got to go this. Yeah. But the moment we give people ownership, yeah. you start taking care of it because yeah. now it's yours. Yeah. And if somebody infringes on what you own, mm -hmm. then you're going to take it very, very personal. Absolutely. So I think that if we empower communities by giving them ownership, it is my honest, honest, honest opinion that I think that will change, or at least will start changing the attitudes mm -hmm. of our communities. Mm -hmm. But there's gotta be the will, right, from yeah. the corporate community to be able to do that, as well as maybe in partnership with the state or the city yeah. to be able to give the land yeah. to, you know, to erase the blithe in our communities yeah. and to just empower those people. But mm -hmm. you, my friend, Tiger Mountain Foundation mm -hmm. right here, you're doing that. Thank you. You're doing that, and that's, I respect that. Appreciate you, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. And you're absolutely right. I mean, you said a key word, empower. Yeah. We, we have incredible quantitative stories, but, but that's almost from the business perspective of a nonprofit still needing to pay bills, keep our classroom instructional space open. We have gardens that range from 1.5 acres to 18 acres. The business side of this is operationally high. So to do social venture in our community is a steep price. Yeah. And you're absolutely right. But it works so when kids drive by who are 11 years old, who are now 18 years old, who are now not paying into an 18 or, or paying into a billion dollar prison pipeline, yep. but, but they're coming back to say hello. Uh, we, we had a homeless guy who just recently donated $50 to the, oh. the nonprofit. That touches, right yeah, it touches yeah. right there. And, yeah. and, and it, 
it, it, it speaks to exactly what you're talking about, the empowerment, the ability of people to say, hey, I own this, I have empowered myself. Matter of fact, uh, I've even passed the baton on to others. And, and you're absolutely right. This is the uh, key way, another key way. I, I see really great people trying to do fantastic things in the community, but uh, I also feel that we are very unique in what we do in our community to the, empower people. The cost of sure. doing nothing is greater than the cost of investing in the community. Darren Chapman, my man. Thank you. Tiger Mountain Foundation, and with that, we're out.